Hello and welcome to today's video. So you've made this great circuit, you found all the bugs and it works just the way you want it to, but it's on a breadboard and it's not a very permanent solution. So you want to transfer it over to a prototyping board such as the Proto Full or the Proto Half. How do we do that? That's the crux of today's video. To demonstrate this, we've made a simple circuit using the Nano and an accelerometer to dim an array of five LEDs. There's the Nano, and here's the accelerometer. There's three axes, X, Y, Z on the accelerometer, but we only care about the Z, so we're just going to ignore the X and Y axes. Now the accelerometer works on 3.3 voltage logic through the I2C bus, and that is not compatible with the Nano, which is at 5 volt. So we need to use a logic level shifter to convert the I2C bus signals from the 5 volt logic level of the nano to the 3.3 volt logic level that is accepted by the accelerometer. Now we're not going to get into more details of the schematic. It is shown here and you can download it in the description below. What's of importance in this video is how do we now take the breadboard design and transfer it over to a more permanent solution such as what we're showing now. The exact same circuit is reproduced on the port of full with each element one by one. Now when we're transferring the breadboard over to a prototyping board, it's not always straightforward. There's going to be advantages in using the port of full and we're going to take those advantages in consideration. For example, there is a female barrel jack that we're going to utilize that the breadboard obviously doesn't have. We're just connecting straight to the power supply. Speaking of power, there's also multiple rails that we're going to configure that is not as easy to do on the breadboard. That will be shown uh, later on. But first, we do want to talk a little bit about the script as we're utilizing the z-axis output and we're dividing it into five different sections. It is worthwhile to explore a little bit the philosophy of the script and, and how it works. That will be shown next and after that we're going to actually go step by step transferring from the breadboard over to the prototyping board and it took about an hour to do the full thing so we are speeding it up quite a bit showing it as a time lapse. Hope you enjoy! With the accelerometer laying flat on the table corresponding to 1G pointing straight down, the z-axis output of the module reads around 255 to 258 with some fluctuations. The value 255 may remind us of something that's of relevance for us here, so let's take a closer look. Laying out the entire range from 0 to 258, let's separate the last three and throw them away. What we have left is the typical range of the duty cycle for PWM pin. A duty cycle of 0 will completely turn off an LED attached to that pin. Meanwhile, a duty cycle of 255 fully turns on the LED. With that in mind, we want to connect 5 LEDs. So let's take the range 0 to 255, separate them into 5 chunks, and then multiply each element by 5. This way, we have restored a full duty cycle range for each of the 5 sections. Each LED gets its own PWM pin, but the sum of all 5 corresponds to the full electrometer output. For example, when the module experiences 0.5G, 2.5 LEDs are on. When the module lays still on the table as before, all 5 LEDs are fully on. So this is basically what the script does. Note that there's a couple of approximations here, but it works quite well nonetheless. Alright, one of the first steps that I do when I go through such a procedure is just play around with the components, where I'm going to put them. The put a full has the advantage that uh, you can put the components on both sides, including asymmetric ones like the female feral jack. Now right now I'm considering where I should put my power rails. Uh, as mentioned before, we need uh, the VN uh, that feeds the nano itself. And then we also have the 5 volt and 3.3 volt. So when I set these things up, uh, the very first thing that I do is worry about the voltages. So in this case we've got three. So we'll do all those first, then we'll do the grounds. And after that we start doing all the data signals. So I'm just putting in the female jack right there. And like I said this one is uh, asymmetric but the footprint on the full, to put a full, is such that we can put it on both ends. Now 
I'm also putting in a couple of jumpers and uh, connecting those rails but not on all of them the grounds will be everywhere but you can see that I've got the 5 volt and the VN separate on the right side will be the VN going to the nano uh, VN pin and then oh yeah we always need our safety goggles when snipping these uh, often these things fly around aggressively and they can really hurt your eyes so putting the voltage jumpers in the and the grounds you can see we've got the VN right there and next the 5 volt out so the way on the left will be the 5 volt uh, I do this iteratively so I put in a couple jumpers solder them snip them and then I keep going you can see me put on the nano and take it off several times it's a broken nano it's a good way to reuse and I often check back onto the board, breadboard to see uh, if I'm doing things right often I am not and there are mistakes and you'll see that later on um, for example this brown wire here is in the way and I should have not soldered that yet and uh, yeah that was not a good thing to do but uh, you know that's that's how it is so I'm just finishing up the uh, nano female headers there coming together nicely uh, we'll have to do a check later to see if that brown wire was not damaged so now I'm thinking about spacing out uh, the logic level shifter. So here, for example, is a deviation from the breadboard. We are not uh, putting the logic level shifter in between the accelerate accelerometer. We're actually putting it on the other side. Uh, the main thinking uh, for that was that we want the accelerometer to be near the center of the board, just in case we want to do something like drop the accelerometer down and we want it to be in the middle. Uh, I thought maybe that would be more useful. So that is the logic level shifter. And again, I am uh, only worrying about the voltages and the grounds for now. thinking about the accelerometer and uh, powering it up making sure that I get my voltages correct in this case I think I do I have to take a break there, so got a coffee. That was the half halfway mark. Now I'm slowly putting in the resistors for the five LEDs, spacing them out nicely. I try to make it look as nice as I can. Although it looks are not too important for this project. Most of the purpose of, of what we're doing, but still nonetheless I try to make it look nice with the exception of the data wires as you'll see later I, uh, I don't put a lot of time or effort into making those wires go nice 90 degrees and flat and, and all that uh, I, I can't be bothered to even trim the wires down so you'll see a bow on them just like on the breadboard full disclosure some people uh, that's like putting pineapple on a pizza it's a big no-no for me you know what I like pineapple I like the long loosey goosey wires, not a big deal. Now putting in the LEDs, you gotta make sure that you put the negative to the direction that it should be. And uh, that'll be part of the testing that we do later to make sure it's all good. Uh, again, I forgot my goggles, after the break I took off the goggles. Alright, so now I'm thinking about the data signals. All the voltages are done. Starting with the logic level shifter, we got the uh, the I to C bus. And here you can see my first example of 
not caring about the wire being as short as possible or nice and straight 90 degrees and all that I don't even uh, bother so much with uh, color coding appropriately if it works it works but I do apologize for anybody who gets upset at uh, what some might call sloppy work others might call efficient anyways now bringing over the low voltage side of the I2C signals just the 5 volt and over to the 3.3 and uh, that's coming coming together so I always refer back to the breadboard make sure that we get the correct pin assignment that we have done in the script by the way that script is available for download see the description below so now I'm doing wire by wire and trimming it at each step making sure it is correct this is the part where you can easily uh, wire up the wrong pin and then wonder why it's not working Trust me, I've done that many times. getting near the end this is it let's test it out in the lab the first thing I do when I test these sort of things is make sure my voltages are correct turn on the multimeter and then the power supply and I check that the VN rail gives me the reading of what I set on my power supply in this case just over 7, 7, 8 perfect and I slowly put in the components to make sure things work as they should now checking the 5 volt great and my 3.3 should be there as well looks like all these voltages are good of course missing the accelerometer let's put it in we have to reboot it and amazingly it works right off the bat that's the first time that has ever happened before there's no further testing that needs to be done that's it it works so there you have it we transferred successfully uh, the circuit from the breadboard over to the prototyping board and again this wasn't really too important what the circuit is we wanted to show the procedure of going from breadboard to prototyping board using the protocol hope you enjoyed thanks for watching